All right, so if we were going to, we talked about how to find the area of this shaded region here, you'd have to use um, one half, kind of like big R squared minus little r squared from the angle, one angle to the other angle, and that will get you that. Anytime you have a sector that has like, if you can imagine there's a sector, some shaded and then some not shaded and you're looking for that shaded it would be kind of like the washer method where you do r squared or it'd be big r squared minus little r squared but it's one half that is our formula one half big r squared minus little r squared d theta all right so what if we were looking for this blue area right here how could i find that blue area We could find the area of the whole petal minus the area of the shaded region, which this gets us the shaded region right down here, this integral that we found out. So that's one way of doing it. Find the area of the whole petal minus the shaded region, you'd have the blue area. So if I was trying to find the area of the whole petal here, That's not like the washer where you have to do one r squared minus little r squared. What would the equation for that, like what would be my integral to find the area of that whole petal there? Which of these two equations do we use for the petal one? r equals two or four sine two theta? The bottom one, right. Because r equals two is all points that have a distance of 2. So well, that's just a circle. And r equals 4 sine 2 theta, that must be the flower petal problem. So we would integrate from here to, now would it be pi over 12 to 5 pi over 12? If we did that, we would only be getting, hmm, it's hard to draw this. We'd only be getting the area starting from here to there. So if you can imagine, if this is, we'd be getting like this ice cream cone, but we would not be getting that little sliver here because it doesn't go all the way down here. It stops right there and it would be a little bit of a sliver left over. Okay, so we're not going to go pi over 12 to five pi over 12. We're gonna go probably zero to whenever our next r equal to zero. So that'd be pi over two, I believe. Yeah. So you go integrate from zero to pi over two, one half r, which is four sine of two theta squared d theta. That will give you the entire sector, or not sector, pedal, I guess. So that minus the one down below would get you the blue area. So it's difficult when we're doing this polar integration to figure out the boundaries of integration because you have to kind of visualize what's going on, where am I starting, where am I ending. I'm going to show you another way of doing it just using more of a straightforward approach for the blue one. So if this was my blue Kind of a shield here. There's my blue shape. If I start off right at zero, I'm going to make a bunch of sectors that look like this, then like this, then like this. So what is bounding my area as it grows? What equation right now is bounding it? It's one half. What's my r? It's the four sine two theta, right? because that's it's basically starting this whole pedal off of this curve right here. So I'm adding sectors, adding sectors, until I get to right here, I've added all of that area. Well now it changes and it's bounded by r equals two because that's the circle right here. 
So what we can do is we can find this area and we can double it and we'll have both of those little chunks and that's just the integral one half r oops squared d theta and it would be from zero to pi over twelve is when it actually intersects right there so it'd be from zero to pi over twelve and if we double that we've gotten that chunk and that chunk and now we just have this sector piece of pizza that is bounded by r equals two so this area would be integral from pi over 12 to 5 pi over 12 1 half and your r is just 2 r equals 2 squared d theta and that will get you that so that area that integral plus that integral will also get you the blue two ways of doing it questions on that not that we're experts on it, but it, does it seem to make sense? It's hard to tell where if I... Are you asking about my presentation? No. I was going to say, you're taking a quiz right now. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> this is really dumb. I don't even know if I can ask you. But gravity and the... This 30... <laughs> and yeah, I'm still recording. But we have no idea who... It, we don't know who that was, Lexi, so don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to move on to the last page of notes. Um, length of a polar curve. Okay, so it's another formula. This right here is actually the same as um, integral from alpha or fish to beta. Uh, square root of dx d theta squared plus dy d theta squared d theta and if we had time or interest we could prove that these two integrals are the same this is a more workable integral it's easier than doing it that up because you're going to be given r as a function of theta so you can just find a derivative plug it in here and then just square r and you're good. It's the same thing as that algebraically we could prove that but I would just base the length of the polar curve off of that formula right there. Surface area probably looks familiar we've had as our third surface area formula also in polar it's still going to be 2 pi y and then the arc length and the y is r sine theta or if you need x like if it's going around the y-axis, x is r cosine theta, and then times the arc length. So just a matter of kind of remembering that surface area formula. All right, my little blue area soaked right through my note packet. Uh, so if we're going to find the surface area, uh, we're given r squared equals cosine of 2 theta, Um, looks like I square rooted both sides in order to find, I mean, you don't have to, but, but I think that's easiest. Square root each side, then do the derivative, and you've got negative sine 2 theta over square root of cosine 2 theta. So that's our dr d theta. Um, we're going around the y-axis here, so we're revolving this eyeball around the y-axis. So since we're going around the y formula down here because it's a vertical axis of revolution, so it's an integral from wherever to wherever 2 pi x which is our cosine theta. Um, so now plugging it in to show you what I did here. Uh, x is r which is this cosine theta square root of r squared well it's actually helpful that r squared is already given to us it's cosine 2 theta plus the derivative which we found right here squared and all that d theta 
Um, I don't know if it was given to go from negative pi over 4 to pi over 4, but we could find out when r is 0. And it's right here, that's negative pi over 4, and then right there is pi over 4. So we found that by making r 0, so r 0 square root of cosine 2 theta, square both sides, cosine 2 theta equals 0. So when is cosine 0? It's at pi over 2. So 2 theta equals pi over 2. Divide by 2, so theta equals pi over 4. That got us this pi over 4. And we need to go backwards. So the other time that cosine is 0 would be negative pi over 2. So 2 theta equals negative pi over 2. So theta equals negative pi over 4. And that'll get me this boundary of integration. Oh, looks like I, it says it, I traced it. I just showed it analytically. Um, it's probably better to do it analytically. All right, so there's my integral set up. Doesn't mean that uh, the rest is nice and easy, but at least we've got an integral. Um, so the rest is kind of algebra. So this is being squared algebra intrigue. So I end up with sine squared 2 theta over cosine of 2 theta. I then combine these two terms with a common denominator and I end up with cosine squared of 2 theta plus sine squared of 2 theta and if those two are the same then it's always going to be 1. So I get 1 over square root of cosine 2 theta which really works well because those cross off. So really once I pull the 2 pi out, pull that 2 pi out, I'm just integrating cosine theta. And we get our answer. Alright, so that is a surface area example. And that's 10.6 calculus of polar curves.